Well, hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with our feature ad video on a braced basement. Now, you might not see this in your area. We have poor soil conditions where we are. And as a result, a lot of clay, a lot of water, and that pushes in on the box that a foundation is, a concrete foundation is in the ground. And what it does is it starts to buckle and bow in. As you can see on this one, it's, it's pushed the walls right in. And a way of dealing with these in situ is to put steel channels and braces as you've seen uh, they get pinned into the floor and into the floor joists forming a steel box of bars and then they get grouted in so that there's no uh, gap or space between the concrete and the steel and then you go back to putting your basement or your foundation back together now where we are we're cold we need warmth we need to have things insulated so rather than dealing with poly vapor barriers and batting and trying to put framing in we switch to closed cell spray foam now these basements are typically very wet uh, they've got a lot of cracks as you can see the cracks have been filled in with the uh, mp1 uh, piping bag of uh, concrete portland cement mixture and then rather than dealing with plastics or sheet products or membranes which are not going to want to stick to an uneven surface as this we use the closed cell spray foam insulation this is the only solution that should be used for these basements folks because it's going to adhere very tenacious to all of the cracks and crevices and all the little inclusions and what have you of the concrete this basement would have been poured probably in about the 1940s somewhere with the old boards it's not a modern foundation but what we're going to do is we're going to stop the water from coming through so uh, any moisture that's migrating through the concrete through the porosity and through the cracks and through all of the little areas where water will get through it's going to be stopped at the spray foam now enough you can't create enough hydraulic uh, pressure on the back side of the foam to pop it free the foam has got very very um, strong adhesion characteristics we're talking about 16 psi of force to pop it off in a given area well if you multiply that by the amount of surface area of the spray foam on the walls you can't create enough force coming through the cracks to uh, dislodge and disbond the foam so the foam is bonded to the concrete it's not laying it up against it therefore the water is going to come in like a cork in a bottle it's going to come to where the foam is and stop it's not going to form a cavity behind it flow laterally behind it and that's why sealing these up with closed cell foam is the absolute best way we're liquid applied we're getting into all the cracks and crevices like you're seeing here in the floor joist areas we're able to do all of the little subtle nuances and idiosyncrasies of the piping of the steel you've got electrical boxes you've got plumbing but then these steel channels are having to be uh, placed in your way and grouting behind them while well, it's just a bugaboo to go in there and try and get these sealed up with conventional bat products plus you've got a very deep wall so what's going to allow uh, and facilitate to happen now is the closed cell foam can go on it can go in liquid applied all around all these little uh, time consuming pain in the butt areas foam build the foam up to the requisite thickness of what you and the client want to three inches is usually more than enough which is what we're giving them here and then you don't need to worry about the depth of the cavity it doesn't matter if it's six inches or four inches it doesn't matter no additional insulation is needed so then you can go and put your framing up put your electrical wiring into the framing and then from there close up your wall now your wall will be thick but it's got to be thick to deal with the offset of the braces difficult spots like this how are you going to deal with this with conventional how are you going to go in and put framing and put batting and put poly where we are poly is required to be up against the back of the concrete as well as in front of it it's called internal damp proofing and that's because they want to deal with the moisture that's trying to move through the system so here's what the finished product looks like uh, a couple of inches of foam up and down all around into the tight floor joist areas around all of the oddball piping the bracing the cross bracing that they've got up against where the gas meter is coming into the home everything is hundred percent air sealed as you can see and then we're doing that the length of this wall through the tight area underneath the stairs and into the corner now the homeowner can go and put framing up at their leisure I mean if they don't get to it for a couple of months it's no big deal the basement is warm it's dry then no additional insulation is needed as I've said before and then they just go and hang their drywall up so this is going to create a warm comfortable dry environment for longer than anyone's lifetime so another project has been completed click on the share like and subscribe and catch you on the next video